say hello to the Maxtang MTN FP750. Just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Another metal mini PC enters the Challenger ring. Can it fight its way to the top and hold off the competition, Doomslayer style? Or will it be taken down by the mass hordes of demons surrounding it? That's a very good and interesting question, and I'm glad you asked it. We're going to check out this mini in great detail with a whole heap of tests to find out the answer. Right after this message, Max Tang's FP750 has a nice aluminium case with plastic top and bottom lids. Build quality is good, and it's a solid mini PC in the hands. No creaks here ladies and gentlemen, that's what we like to see. The FP750 comes with AMD's Ryzen 7735HS CPU, which is an 8 core, 16 thread processor with Radeon 680M graphics. It performs very similarly to the 6900HX, and has been the best value option CPU for a while now. Max Tang's FP750 starts at $432 US dollars for the bare bones, or $502 with 16GB of RAM and 512GB storage. You can also shave off some additional dollars by not including Windows or a Wi-Fi card. Either way, this isn't the cheapest 7735HS Mini I've reviewed, but I found the cheapest to have issues such as overheating DDR5 memory, loud fan noise or build quality issues. So, price isn't everything, and we'll see how the Maxtang FP750 holds up shortly. In the box is a SATA expansion ribbon cable, a 90 watt power supply, rubber feet, a VESA mount, and HDMI. Don't forget to put on the included rubber feet, or the mini will slide on your desk easily. The port selection is pretty meager. There are 5 USB ports in total, one is USB-C, which supports display, but was not able to power the mini on using my USB-C monitor. There's also one USB 2, and the rest a USB 3 10 gigabit. The USB-C together with a dual HDMI allows for three displays natively. There's also a Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN jack. If you do get the Wi-Fi card, it's Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX200. My Bluetooth audio range test on this one wasn't anything great, but not the worst result either. Since the sticky rubber feet are put on later, it's easier to open this mini. Just four screws, lift the bottom lid, and the 2.5 inch SATA drive can be screwed onto it for more storage. The Kingston Gen 4 NVMe drive has a heatsink on it, and the included RAM is DDR5 5600, but the 7735HS support maxes out at 4800, so it really doesn't matter. An annoying limitation on AMD's part. The M.2 Wi-Fi Bluetooth card is located under the storage drive. Those not wanting to use Windows can go with Ubuntu, as it doesn't have any problems. Here's my test of a USB working just fine. Alright, let's hit the benchmarks. I found the scores coming back by default being lower than what you'd expect from a 7735HS. So N4 NVMe drive included is not the fastest. The sequential read speed is a bit above Gen 3's maximum, and the write speed is at Gen 3 speeds. Still, fine for most. Alright, as usual, I'm going to check if Secure Boot is working properly by playing Valorant. No, it isn't just an excuse to play a few rounds. Honest. And it works fine. I was also curious about gaming performance at 35 watts, and you know what? It holds up well, just like 3D Mark showed. Most games will be GPU bottlenecked, and at 35 watts, it's only a little bit behind the best performance result. An important test is whether the DDR5 memory overheats since there's no fan on the other side. But luckily, there are vents. I left it for 45 minutes on the same scene to see if the frame rate dropped, but it held up and the RAM stayed at 70C maximum. For something different, I wanted to see what the highest resolution is for PS2 and GameCube emulation with this mini, and the answer is 1440p. 4K is too much for these hard to emulate titles, and the frame rate drops too low. Even Need for Speed Most Wanted on GameCube is already dipping at 1440p, but it's acceptable and most games should be full speed. With PS3 emulation you'll be able to play most games at 1080p. Cool. 
even a more difficult game to emulate, like MotorStorm Pacific Rift, manages to hold 30 FPS most of the time, which is how it played originally. You'll also be able to play everything on the Wii U at 1080p. Even Breath of the Wild holds above 30 FPS, no problem. Okay, let's give video editing a try. This 4K Premiere project performs very similarly to the previous 6900HX Mini I reviewed. It does the job pretty well, but when the CPU spikes from scrubbing across the timeline, there is a bit of lag before the video plays, but I'd say it's acceptable. The FP750's BIOS doesn't have a whole load of options you may be interested in. I found Wake System from S5, and that's about it. Power options are available, but as I mentioned earlier, going higher than 35 watts will result in a random shutdown. Max Tang's FP750 idles at 10 watts, which is pretty average, and the maximum power draw is just 67 watts thanks to the low 35 watt power mode. Maximum CPU temp was okay at 85C, and fan noise is higher than expected for this lower power mode. The heatsink on the NVMe drive did keep the temperature reasonable, but it's still on the higher side. Alright, conclusion.